So, all right. So, yeah. once again, I, I'm joined with Omar. Oh no, you are uh, Mustafa. Mustafa. Yeah, yeah. And, and this Omar. is Omar, my friend. Right. So, there are two Muslim brothers that are visiting from Utah, yeah. and the question was in regards to Aisha and yeah. how we can justify the Prophet and Islam's marriage to Aisha. Okay. Yeah. So you saw something on YouTube. There was a keyboard warrior that basically said some inflammatory things about the Prophet yeah. and Islam. And now this is an excellent topic to discuss. Okay. Yeah. So there is conditions to marriage in Islam. And just to very briefly cover them, a woman has to be of medical capacity to bear a child. Right. She has to have had her menses. And she has to be of mental capacity in order to make a informed decision on her own marriage. So what that means is, even when a marriage is arranged, if the person is under age in a sense that they are not there at that mental acumen. So for example, in tribal times, they used to arrange marriages for their children in advance with either neighboring tribes or people of the similar tribe in order to keep things going, right? Uh, because it was a matter of survival. That's right. These guys had an average lifespan of about 30 or 40 years old. Right, so that's the key point. Now, when that person reaches that mental capacity where they can make that decision, the woman has the option of either accepting or rejecting the marriage. Okay. Now, there was a comment that was made that the Prophet Islam committed some form of rape. That's right. And there was a reference to Aisha. Okay. So now, Aisha was already arranged to marry somebody before the Prophet Islam. So what that tells you is that there was a societal norm going on that arranged marriages were happening. That's right. Okay. Now there had to be a waiting period because she was not physically ready to consummate the marriage and she was also not mentally ready to consummate the marriage due to her age. Okay. So if the Prophet was some form of a pedophile or was some form of a rapist, then there would not be a waiting period. He would just jump right in at the youngest point. That's right. Right? Yeah. Okay. Furthermore, you have to take a look at the women that the Prophet married. Every single one of them but one was his senior. Yes. So that tells you that he's not interested in women that are not capable of marriage yeah. and there would not be any form of rape. Now, what defines rape? You basically are forcing yourself uh, onto someone else and you're conducting some type of egregious action onto a woman or a man, right? Depending right. on which way you swing. And um, let me just get you to stand right over here, brother, because the camera's right there. No worries. So you're, you are um, conducting some form of harm to somebody, right? Well, in the Quran, it tells us that we can't inflict harm onto others. So when you think of rape, you're thinking of someone forcibly grabbing somebody against their will, and that person is struggling, right? And then according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, we are not allowed to not only inflict pain on other people, but it cannot leave a mark. That's right. Okay, so the actual definition of rape, in order for it to transpire, there would need to be some type of a struggle, there would need to be some type of a mark left behind, there would need to be some type of pain that's inflicted. That's right. What's wild to me is Aisha never complained about her marriage. Not only that, but then for the remainder of her life, after the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed away, people learned Islam from her for right. many years. That's right. And there was not a single issue at all, ever. So this is a new, modern type argument where they try to pull on emotional strings without respecting the times of back then. That's right. Okay? So, at any point in time, either her legal guardian, which was Abu Bakr or she herself could have rejected the marriage. That's right. And that never happened. So that means the community was sound, her guardianship was sound, the traditions were sound, and then the waiting period was also sound to consummate the marriage. And then you look at the behavior of the Prophet, peace be upon him, where there's not a single indication that he was ever, ever looking at somebody that was underage or incapable. And you can look at that based on the products of his marriages, with many of them being his senior of 10 to 15 years. That's right. Like Khadija. Yeah. So um, this is a very, uh, uh, what you've encountered was a super Islamophobic um, oh, yeah. 
right. heavy doubted uh, argument, which if you just take a moment and reflect on it and you, you look at the pieces individually, you'll see that it doesn't really hold any weight or it doesn't really carry any water uh, simply because you have things in biblical scriptures that are talking about the marriage of children. According to the biblical scriptures, if you did the math on it, Mary, Maria, had Isa when she was 12, right? So there is no, uh, and actually, even ironically, you know the state of Delaware, right? Yeah. Not but uh, within the last 100 years, you could marry a seven-year-old. Wow. Yeah. So, it, I mean, which kind of means like the times back then is like completely different from, you know, our time right now, right? 100%. That's 100% right. different. And not only do we have to acknowledge it for that, but then we have to respect the Prophet with the the caliber of who he is. That's He's right. a messenger of God. Yep. So uh, we believe that the prophets are masum, they're infallible, meaning that they can make mistakes, but committing major sins, that, right. like rape, like, you know, that's just, that's crazy. It doesn't make no sense. It doesn't make no sense because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not pick unjust people to be his messengers. That's right. If you get a chance and you open up um, the Quran to chapter 21, which is Surah Anbiya, you can do Surah Nur as well. Uh, NBA does a fantastic job between the verses of uh, 88 to 110 to talk about all of the prophets. And then he says, these are all righteous people. So um, they're, they're capable of making mistakes, don't get me wrong. Where even in the Quran, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrects the prophet, peace be upon him, where he ignores the blind man. Abba sawa tawalla. Abba sawa tawalla. Right? right? <laughs> Nailed it, dude. Okay. So they're not... They're not, they're human beings, right. but they are held to a much higher standard and rightfully so because they have such a uh, strong link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as well as the, the uh, beauty and the, the perfection of his message. So, you know, it's unfortunate that you ran into a troll like that, but there's a lot of them. Yeah, you know? obviously this comments like pretty often these, you know, like past month and stuff. Exactly. Especially when like, you know, like a lot of sheikh like you, you know, being like, you know, start doing this. I wish I was a sheikh. Let me just correct you on that. I wish I was a sheikh. I'm not even worthy to tie a scholar's shoelaces, I mean, man. But, I'm just... <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, like I've had like a concern and then, you know, I kind of like relied on you to kind of like, you know, a little bit, which is nice. Yeah. Right? You know, um, I was So, yeah, alhamdulillah. You know, I, I, um, you know, mashallah, bro, it, it takes a lot of courage to uh, come come forth with whatever your doubts are. That's right. And, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for that because if you, if you keep it in there in your heart and you let it build and build and build, it can be troublesome. That's right. When the answer is really, really simple. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a there's a full presentation done by uh, Ustaz Adnan Rashid. I'll link you to the YouTube. He did an hour-long presentation on the marriage of Aisha. And from an Islamic perspective, as a Muslim, uh, we are not afraid to acknowledge what is what. And what I mean by that is the Prophet, according to the Ahadith, some of their opinions are that he married Aisha at the age of six and he consummated it at nine. Yeah. There is nothing wrong with that. As long as the criteria for womanhood is met. That's right. Right? And two things here. One, uh, what prophet is there from him dead? It's all order of them. He didn't do anything from their own. One. The second, as he mentioned, the marriage behind the uh, age of the uh, Aisha, I don't know our mom is. Because Prophet Musa of Allah has passed away, but she was the only source of all the uh, Sahaba. When they have come across an any difficulty, any question, they ask, oh, go and ask the Aisha. Yeah. And she was like a live source of Islam, so far she was alive. And they teach people, and they have, if they have any problem for up to that one, that's the only source. She just referred to Bibi Aisha. Right? And so go and ask. Because she was younger, and therefore she had a long age. Yeah. At least to be alive. Aisha, Aisha was definitely chosen. 100%. Yeah. And, and they said that like she memorized more hadith than It was Abu over 5,000, I believe. Uh, yeah. Over, over 5,000. Because she was younger than the time of the time. Those uh, which were very close to marriage, which no one narrated, 
see all the one, especially about the woman. Who she got the more? One, who got more hadith between power. Aisha and Abu Huraira? I, I'm not. I'm who, not certain. Who got more a hadith? Who like memorized more a hadith between Aisha and Abu Huraira? I don't know the answer to that. I don't remember, but both of them are the most important yeah. people. That it's a good been question. Been through with the Prophet peace be upon him long, long time and narrate the, the, the main point is that Alhamdulillah we have those even Abu Huraira or Abu Huraira or Abu Aisha. Any of them they narrate it, but the goodness is that we have it now. That's important. That's right. Yeah. Regardless who they are. But it's important that those hadiths we have. For example, you have Bukhari, Muslim, Buddha, these are the sources that they have from those. Yeah. That's right. And actually the the, the marriage behind the most marriage behind that is because even the book Abu Bakr Siddiqua was the one who uh, when 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 uh, when Aisha gets in the age, she requests the Prophet, please do that. And the, the marriage. That's right. Actually, so, and when some, most fine people target this, why? But no one says when the Prophet was 25, was 40. No That's one right. says why that. Yeah, yeah, see yeah. the difference of age. Yeah. But no one says, but only they just. Aisha, Aisha. Aisha. She's an easy target. Yep, and, they, right. and they're not looking at the, like the brother said, they're not looking at the actual product of her works, right? And what she actually contributed. And remember, from her marriage till death, not a single complaint, not a single, like, this was wrong, and I felt cheated, and blah, 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 blah. You know? There was times where even, I think she narrated when she expressed frustration and jealousy, right? frustration in a sense of like marital frustration and jealousy because he had multiple wives but that was a, a learning lesson and there was good that came from that that's right, right. Yep. so um, and that's to me that's also a sense of reality you know what I'm saying yep. like if it was just everything was perfect and this is not that's not realistic that's right you know the prophet last time he cried he was sad at times he was happy at times he joked at times uh, he was angry at times. He's a human being. Yep. And naturally, like his wives are going to be sad at times. They're going to be happy at times. They're going to be jealous at times. They're going to be. And, you and know? so far, people said he's going to be the time I was alive. Prophet is going to have more other wives. And when she passed away, then she had the marriage. But all the marriage because of. He, he wants someone. For example, if he, he married one lady from one village, did he all the village? All the tribes support. Oh, okay. Yeah, so some of them were political, uh, politically motivated to ban, stop wars. To oh, okay. to you know, uh, and many of the people that he married were widowed. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. And the other thing, for example, when they married one, in Arabic there is a common that you will be belong to any tribe or religion. No one will force you anything or damage you or cause you problem. Then he has, mashallah, after that seven or eight, he was all related to one tribe and he was saved. And he just, all you, how do you on your side? Go far, 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 Alhamdulillah. All behind is that. That's right. Not shower, not nothing. Just because it's how to have people to support us. Like Bibi Khadija, the one who she gave him all the wealth, his knowledge, support. Yep. And even when she, uh, Prophet Jehovah came from uh, Hora, yep. the ma mountain of Lut, and she direct he directly came to the Jewish and said, "Cover me, cover me." Zamiluni, Zamiluni. And then, Masha, uh, are you uh, half Israel? You know why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just know that. Yeah, bit. still, how does that? Just talking to other people in Nusra, he was related to him. And he mentioned for him, oh yeah, we well, were a prophet and the same Namus, the same angel came to the Moses, he's be upon him, he came to you, and you will have a big Rasala. I wish I were alive when the people get you out from Makkah. Like, right. They get me out, so yeah. That's all yeah, because of the wise wife she had. That's right. All right. What other, what other one do you have? To you guys. What's up? What other one do you have? Do you have any other questions or anything? No, I'm good. <laughs>